Here I would like to show how to use the spectral method to solve a couple of cangular equations in multiple dimensions. And before doing that, uh, first I want to show the general method for a generic PD, which looks like this. So in this expression, this L represents a linear operator, which can contain uh, several high order derivatives and constant terms and this n represents the nonlinear terms and non-constant coefficients so if i fully transform this expression so what i'm going to get is something that looks like this in this expression this a coefficient is uh, contains uh, the k wave numbers and this is u hat which is the Fourier transform of the original u variable and this is uh, n hat contains the Fourier transform of the of the rest of the of the of the terms. So this is already a ordinary differential equation, and for this I can use any kind of ODE solver. In particular, I'm going to use ODE45. And uh, to give a example, here I have a couple of cangular equations. So here, this v1 and v2 are the coupling constants the sigma is the long-range interaction and uh, i can write this expression in a more familiar way if i just multiply this laplacian for each one of these terms and it looks like this so in this expression we can already uh, fully transform in the x direction and if i do that it's going to look like this so for instance this fourth order derivative when i apply Fourier transform, I get this this term here, kx fourth, and uh, some other terms look like that. For in, for instance, this one, the second order derivative, when I Fourier transform, I get a uh, k, kx square with a minus. This comes from the i square. So in similarly, we can uh, we can Fourier transform the wall expression and it looks like that. And before uh, going forward. I just want to make a quick comment about the the um, second order derivative which can be written like this uh, parcel of u with respect to x square and then parcel of u with respect with y square if i Fourier transform this in x i get this term here minus kx square but the the term for uh, for y i don't transform it because it's in the x direction only this transformation but then i apply the second fourier transform in the y direction and then i get my my term in the y direction which is my minus ky square uh, i can do the same for the four order derivative i'm not going to to explain that part but you can pause the video to see how the calculation goes on but the result is this if i uh, fourier transform the four order derivative i'm going to get this expression here in red so I have these two expressions, this in blue, in blue color, and this one in red color. I can substitute these two one, these two expressions into the um, original set of equations here. And if I do that, what I'm going to get is the following set of equations. I'm going to try to extend this to yes all right so this is what i get this is the set of calculated equations in, in the frequency domain and in two dimensions so i want to make a couple of, com of comments uh, about this so the first one is that this is already in frequency domain so what i'm going to do is write a function in matlab to contain this expression and the, that function is going to be in the frequency domain so there are some um, terms like this this uh, u cube and this v square and this product here so to compute those first I, I i need to compute the inverse for the transform of of the ordered parameters u and b then perform the product in this case and once i get the, the product then i can Fourier transform again in X and in Y. Similarly, for this one here, 
what I do is first in uh, inverse Fourier transform the order parameter b, then multiply it by itself element wise, and once I get the product, then I can compute again the Fourier transform in next and in y. So that's that's the first comment. The other comment is that because this is in frequency domain, if I want to get quantities like, uh, for instance, the morphology or, of conservation of, of the energy, uh, first I need to extract the, you know, the, uh, the solution of this, uh, of this problem in the frequency domain, invert it to get the solution in the, in, in the spatial domain, and then I can start to do calculations. So essentially I need to put this function into a time loop and from a, at different time intervals I can do calculations. So um, uh, all right, so what I'm going to do next is just to, to assemble this expression into a OD solver and for that I'm going to, to need also my initial condition the initial condition because this is in frequency domain I have to also fit this initial condition in in the frequency domain so that's what I'm going to do in the second part of this video all right so what I'm going to do now is to explain how to solve this uh, system of equations I already uh, wrote a code in MATLAB so I'm just going to, to explain how to do it so here we have the uh, parameter of the model and uh, in my case I'm going to use a small uh, domain of size 20 and this one here is not really a time step this, uh, this is a interval of time at which I'm going to extract results um, because we are doing this in the frequency domain first I have to define my web numbers which I defined here this part here is because we are using a Fourier transform so we assume that the uh, domain is periodic and it has uh, period 2 pi and then I uh, resize with the size of the original domain um, so at this point I can define the web numbers in, in X and in Y but these are just uh, it's just a, a one-dimensional array of numbers. If I want to write this to, if I want to write this as a square domain, I have to use this function. What this function does is just convert this uh, uh, one-dimensional array into a matrix. That's what it does. Now this is a uh, uh, once I have these numbers here. Now I can start computing my and blue and red quantities the one that appears here this it would be the one in red and this one would be the one in blue I'm going to call this K just K, K2 and this is K4 so this one here and this is the other uh, the other term in in, in in, blue, in red color then I'm going just to reshape it and I have to reshape it as a column vector and then I I have already my wave numbers now I'm going to define the the X the X axis so this is how I define my X axis and I'm going to do the same for the Y axis and similarly as I did for the for the wave numbers I have to make sure that these two uh, arrays in X and Y they are orthogonal to each other so that's, that this is the function that I use for that and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to use a random initial condition this is how I define my random my initial condition for you and similarly for for B and I'm going to free transform both of them, both the, the initial condition for U and B. This is the Fourier transform of those quantities. And then reshape as column vector. And then I just uh, join them into a single vector. So this is what I'm going to fit to my 
ODE solver. I'm not going to explain this part and go directly to the solution. So what I have here is a call to a ODE solver. And this is the initial condition that I just wrote here. And my parameters, epsilon, epsilon b, sigma, etc. And these are the matrices that contains the wave numbers that I define right there. This one here and this one there. So this contains the uh, terms in blue and in red color here. Now I have now I have this uh, these uh, quantities here. Now I can write this expression for the entire set of equations. So uh, this uh, this function I'm going to call it the uh, w, uh, w par to d, and I already wrote it is here. So I'm just going to explain what is in here. So. Um, In this function, I get my uh, initial condition, which are already in the frequency domain. I'm going to separate, I'm going to split these two into U and B, and then reshape it as a square domain, and then Fourier transform, inverse Fourier transform. I'm going to do this because I need the original or, or uh, order parameters U and B to compute quantities like uh, the square of the cube and a product. So I'm going to compute all those and then Fourier transform again in X and in Y. And finally, once I have already all my quantities that appears in the original expression, I have this blue and uh, blue and red, and also I have my my cubes and the, these products and this other product here, then I can uh, assemble the entire function and and that thing is done in this in this part here. So this is the part that corresponds to the order parameter u, and this one is the part that corresponds to order parameter b. And then I join them to send the result back to the main program. And once I have my solution, remember the solution is going to be in the frequency domain, if I want to do calculations to extract morphology or energy conservation, etc., I have to um, inverse Fourier transform before doing calculations. So I get my solution, then I go to another part of the program, and in here I am doing the inverse of the solution for U, the inverse for the solution for B, and I, st I can start to plot things like the morphology, this would be the um, the um, order parameter u in the order parameter b. I'm going to show, I'm going to run this program and show how it looks like. And similarly, here is the energy calculation, etc. And uh, finally, I'm going to plot the energy and the conservation of mass. So I'm going to run this program and see how it looks like. So run it. So this thing here you see is the evolution of o, o, uh, U and B in the spatial domain. This is already uh, inverse Fourier transform of the uh, all the parameters. And I'm going to wait a few seconds before. Yes. So this is the mass, the mass conservation. So the mass is conserved. Uh, more or less in a satisfactory way and this one here is the energy the uh, evolution of the energy so with this I conclude the explanation of the spectral method for coupled cantilever equations in two dimensions